let's talk about the Boring Company and their new plan to build us a genuine, bona fide, electrified six car Hyperloop, or something like that. This is a fairly old idea that Elon Musk hatched back in 2013 with the promise that it would be as easy as an air hockey table inside a tube. Then, for the better part of the next decade, various companies piled on trying to make that idea a reality, all with varying degrees of failure. And now, in 2022, seemingly out of nowhere, both Elon and his boring company are throwing out promises that a full-scale Hyperloop test will happen this year. But what the hell even is a Hyperloop? Well, opinion ranges from a stupid pipe dream to the future of transportation. And since no one has yet created a functional Hyperloop system, it can still go either way. So let's try and figure out what the deal is with the Hyperloop and see if Elon can actually pull this one off or just prove the haters right. We'll start at the beginning with Elon Musk's much revered and refuted white paper titled Hyperloop Alpha. Elon published this on the Tesla website in 2013 to illustrate his concept for a super high speed train in a low pressure tube. At the time, he was very upset that California had approved a new high speed bullet train that was both one of the slowest and most expensive high speed rail lines in the world. So. Elon decided that he should invent something better and show them how it's done. Could we build a fifth mode of transit? We have planes, trains, automobiles, and boats, right? What comes next? The Elon Musk of 2013 thought he had the answer. Now, Elon might well be the first person to name this idea Hyperloop, but he's far from the first person to have thought up a design like this. I think the idea of a high-speed train in a sealed tube actually dates back to the late 1800s. New York City had a very short-lived test project in 1870 called the Beach Pneumatic Transit. It worked on the same principle as those old pneumatic tubes that they used to have in office buildings to send written messages. An excess of pressure in the tube pushes the carriage through the tube like shooting a spitball out of a straw. In his white paper, Elon ruled this out for a scaled up human transit system because there would be too much friction between the column of high velocity air and the inside of the tube. The modern Hyperloop works in the opposite way. An absence of pressure in the tube allows the capsule to move forward without resistance. Not a complete absence of pressure though. While it's easiest to quickly describe a Hyperloop as a vacuum tube, Elon Musk specifically says, that it would be too difficult to maintain a true vacuum over hundreds of miles of tubes with dozens of station gateways and maybe thousands of pods traveling through. So we keep the pressure as low as possible while still being sustainable. Unfortunately, this means that there is still a non-trivial amount of air in the tube and that leads us straight into another problem. This is known as the Kantrowitz limit. If there is still air in the tube and the transit capsule is moving at high speed through that tube, then you need to maintain a certain amount of gap between the capsule and the wall of the tube. If the gap is too tight, then the capsule becomes like a plunger moving through a syringe. It will start pushing the entire column of air in front of it through the tube. That's bad. It means that the capsule either needs to move slowly or you need a giant tube that is much wider than the capsule so you don't create a syringe. This is where the air hockey table comes into play. Elon's solution was to mount an electric compressor fan on the front of the capsule that would transfer high pressure air from the front to the back of the vehicle. At the same time, this excess air pressure would create a low friction suspension system. This is known as an air bearing and is the same principle that allows the puck on an air hockey table to float around. But in this case, the capsule or the puck would be producing its own air cushion, not the tube. This is critical to make the tube as simple and low cost as possible. Much like a Tesla vehicle, the capsule would have a large battery pack to power the compressor fan. And also like a Tesla, the Hyperloop would be powered by electric motors. A linear induction motor would be embedded in the track to launch the capsules from a starting point 
to a high subsonic velocity, and then every 70 miles, the capsule would pass over another motor for a reboost. Elon wrote that only about 1% of the entire track would need these linear motors embedded. Even so, the tube is by far the most expensive part of this whole deal. Like, mad expensive. In 2013, Elon assumed that a Hyperloop tube from LA to San Francisco would cost several billion dollars. So in today's money, factoring inflation and supply chain and all the other nightmares, that would cost in the tens of billions of dollars to complete. Not that Elon Musk doesn't have it, for the same amount of money he's raising to buy Twitter.com, he probably could have built the Hyperloop tunnel. Things have gotten weird lately. Anyway, the whole point being that by using a Hyperloop capsule traveling at close to the speed of sound instead of a jet airplane, we will in the long term prove to be more economical and environmentally friendly. Sounds good, right? Yeah, definitely sounds like a great idea. Is anything we've just said actually technically possible? We don't know. It has yet to be seen, at least. But that has not stopped a number of companies from trying to produce their own version of the Hyperloop. Like we said, there is no currently functional Hyperloop system anywhere in the world that we know of. When Elon published that white paper, he was openly inviting other companies to try and make the idea a reality. Elon knew that Tesla wasn't making any money at the time and wouldn't make money for years to come so he was in no position to actually build the thing himself. Many ambitious business people stepped in, but Sir Richard Branson and his Virgin Group were easily the most high profile. Actually, what Branson did was just buy out a smaller company called Hyperloop Technologies that had actually been founded by a personal friend of Elon Musk and a former SpaceX engineer. Either way, the Virgin Hyperloop promised basically the same thing as Elon Musk's white paper, a fast, modern, comfortable, and safe transit solution that prioritizes sustainability. The biggest difference in the Virgin Hyperloop was that they ditched the air hockey table premise in favor of something called magnetic levitation. You ever try to push the north poles of two magnets together? That same force that repels the magnets allows the Virgin Hyperloop capsule to float while being suspended from above on a track. Virgin would avoid the syringe effect of pushing the capsule through a narrow tube by creating a true vacuum tube with virtually zero air pressure at all. Somehow, we never did get a full explanation on how that would actually work. To Virgin's credit, they did actually build a 500 meter long test version of their Hyperloop tube in 2017, and they built a test pod called XP1 and conducted several hundred tests of the levitation system, vacuum tube, airlock, and propulsion. The XP-1 reached a top speed of 240 miles per hour in the vacuum tube thanks to its array of four propulsion engines and over 3,000 horsepower. By 2020, Virgin was ready to put people in their pod. The XP-2 was the first Hyperloop pod to move human passengers. The experimental pod looked nothing like any of the Virgin digital renderings. It honestly just looked like a cutout chunk from the body of a private jet. Probably the one Richard Branson had gotten tired of. But in November 2020, two Virgin employees were rocketed through the 500 meter test tube at a top speed of 107 miles per hour. By early 2021, Virgin Hyperloop was talking freely about their bold vision for the future that would connect cities and revolutionize transportation. By early 2022, Virgin Hyperloop was announcing that they had fired half of their staff members and given up completely on using the Hyperloop to transport people, saying that instead, they would just use it to move cargo. Virgin says that this change in direction is due to global supply chain issues. And that is where we re-enter Elon Musk and his boring company. About two months after Virgin announced that they were basically throwing in the towel on this whole Hyperloop business, Elon doubled down on his old promise to make it happen. It started with the Boring Company announcing they had secured over $675 million in new funding to expand their tunneling infrastructure program. The company said that a series of investors were able to support them during their Series C funding round, pushing the company to about $5.7 billion in value. A few days after the funding announcement, Elon Musk tweeted, in the coming years, Boring Co. will attempt to build a working Hyperloop. 
From a known physics standpoint, this is the fastest possible way of getting from one city center to another for distances less than 2,000 miles. Starship is faster for longer journeys. Elon also wants to launch people across the ocean in rocket ships, but that's another video. Now, very often, Elon Musk will just say things on Twitter that have no basis in reality at all. But in this case, the Boring Company official Twitter account followed up Elon's tweet with an even bigger announcement. They said that, quote, Hyperloop testing at full scale begins later this year. What does that mean? Well, in theory, that indicates that the Boring Company will have something in operation very similar to what Virgin Hyperloop built back in 2017, a full-size test tube with a functioning pod. That still leaves the Boring Company far behind the now-failed Virgin project in terms of testing and human trials, but it would still be just the second full-scale functional Hyperloop ever created. And that's no small accomplishment. Everything else is still up in the air. We don't know if the Boring Company is still working off Elon's old white paper or if they've designed something new. Will the Boring Capsule still use the air hockey method for levitation or do they upgrade to magnets? And more pressing than any of those technical details, where does a real working Hyperloop actually get built and put into use? The problem with an infrastructure project like this is that it has no precedent. We're just going to have to take some crazy rich guy's word for it that this thing actually does what it's supposed to do after tens or even hundreds of billions of dollars get spent to build it. When we're talking about securing government infrastructure funding, this is not the kind of thing that politicians want to gamble taxpayer money on. I'm sure the majority of taxpayers don't want to see that either. So that leaves us with a pickle. One of the ways that the Boring Company has been avoiding this so far with their smaller loop projects is to self-fund their own projects up front. So in the case of the Las Vegas Strip Loop, the Boring Company is paying for all of the tunneling and station construction themselves. Zero funding from the taxpayers of Vegas or Nevada. And then in return, the Boring Company gets to keep the majority of the fare money collected from riders going forward. This is the exact opposite of how a usual public transit project goes. Typically, the municipality will pay a contractor a large sum of money to build a subway or a light rail or whatever, and then the city will recoup that money by collecting fares from riders. So we can imagine that the first real Hyperloop might get built under similar circumstances. If Elon Musk were to approach the state of California or wherever and tell them he was willing to pay for the whole thing, all they have to do is grant him approval to start digging, could that work? It would be a tough sell and it definitely would be a huge risk for Elon. Very high cost on a project that might not work. But the same could be said for this whole Twitter fiasco. Even if Elon spends 40 or $50 billion to buy a website, he'll still have something between 200 and 250 billion left over to fund an ultra fast vacuum train. Or maybe Elon goes somewhere else entirely to experiment with the Hyperloop. A country with a more autocratic government and lower regulations would certainly make it easier to launch a disruptive new infrastructure technology. All Elon needs to do is make the right offer to the right king or dictator, and he can probably have shovels in the ground within a week. Not that that would be an ethically sound plan, but it would be a plan. Either way, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Where do you see the boring Hyperloop going? Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.